So the diagram shows a wooden beam of negligible weight. So basically this is a wooden beam. There is a weight of the beam, but that is negligible. When they say negligible, it means you don't have to consider. That's why we did not draw an arrow to show the weight of the beam. Then there, the man is walking on the beam. The weight of the man is acting or weight always act downward. So weight of the man is equals to 800 Newton. We have to calculate the distance between the man and the pivot that is unknown. This is X. And they mention the length of this beam. The total length of the beam is equals to three meters. The force of the rope is there of 500. What is what is the distance between the man from P when the tension in the rope Q becomes 500 or equal to 500? Tension in a rope means force in the rope that's equal to 500. So with direction weight of a man is causing the rotation. This will cause a rotation in clockwise and with direction if this will try the tension in the rope will try to cause a rotation that is anti-clockwise. And because it is an equilibrium, as they mentioned here, or even if they did not mention, you have to solve these type of questions by considering that object is in equilibrium or object is balanced. So the clockwise moment is equals to anti-clockwise. The clockwise moment, the weight of the man is 800 multiplied by distance from the pivot is unknown. That is X equal to the anti-clockwise moment the force is 500 and the distance what is the distance of this 500 force from the pivot the total distance is 3 because the length of the beam is 3 so total distance is 3 800 is multiplied other side it will divide so 500 multiplied by 3 divided by 800 so when you solve this you will get 1.875 which is approximately equal to 1.9 that is why C is the right answer. Is it clear this question? So now we'll do more questions related to the turning effect or a moment. Okay, in this question, in a braking system of a car, this is a picture from a braking system of a car, the brake pedal rotate the rotate about a pivot. So this is a pivot is given. When the pedal is pressed as shown in the figure. So when the pedal is pressed, it will rotate about the pivot. The driver exert a force of 200. So driver is exerting a force of 200 on a paddle at a distance of 22 centimeter from the pivot. So this distance is 22. As a paddle rotate about the pivot, a force is exerted on the piston and the pressure of the oil increases. So force is exerted on the piston and the pressure of the oil is increased. The area of the piston is given 5 exponent minus 4. Calculate the force on the piston. So how we can calculate force on the piston? So first we have to work out the direction in which they can cause a rotation. If this is a pivot, a 200 Newton force, which direction this will cause a rotation? A 200 Newton force, clockwise or anti-clockwise? So that is clockwise. Then there is a force, this force, which direction this will try to cause a rotation? The for unknown force F, force on the piston. So that will try to cause an anti-clockwise rotation. So whenever we are solving a question, we always assume that it is in equilibrium. So when it is in equilibrium, we assume the total anti-clockwise moment
is equal to total clockwise moment. So the force which we are applying that is F multiplied by distance from the pivot. What is the distance? What is the distance from the pivot for anti-clockwise moment? The force is F, the unknown, and the distance from the pivot is 8 centimeters. So that is 8. Equal to clockwise moment, the force is 200 multiplied by distance from the pivot. So this total distance that is equal to 22. Whenever I told you, whenever we are solving a question related to this, if they did not mention, we have to assume that it is balance. And whenever we assume we, it is balanced, it means we have to consider it is in equilibrium until unless they mention. So whenever you are solving a question related to a turning effect, you have to assume it is balanced or it is in equilibrium. So it will be 200 multiplied by 22. 8 is multiplied, other side it will divide. So it will be 200 multiplied by 22 divided by 8. What is our final answer for the force? 200 multiplied by 22 divided by 8. So that's equal to 550 newtons. Is it clear this part? Okay. Another question. Two mechanics are there, A and B, are trying to use two person spanner or a wrench to loosen a nut. So they are using a two person spanner to use on a large wheel. Figure 2.1 shows the force exerted by the two mechanics. So mechanic A is exerting a force of 500 downward and mechanic B is exerting a force of 400. Mechanic A exert a force of 500 at a distance of 1.2. Mechanic B is exerting a force of two, uh, 400 at a distance of 1.2. Calculate the magnitude and the direction of resultant moment. So when there's a resultant moment means it is not in equilibrium. One of the moment will be higher than the other. Now how to calculate first. This is a pivot, a point of rotation because they mention here around point P it is rotating. So it is a pivot with direction mechanic A is cause, trying to cause a rotation. Clockwise or anti-clockwise. So mechanic A is trying to cause an anti-clockwise rotation and mechanic B is trying to cause a clockwise rotation. Now what is the anti-clockwise rotation when we calculate the total anti-clockwise rotation here? That is 500 multiplied by 1.2. So 500 times 1.2 that's equal to 600 Newton meter because it's 500 multiplied by 1.2 then the clockwise and it is a moment when it's a moment it is need Newton meter or Newton centimeter if it was a force only then it will be Newton a mechanic B is exerting a force of 400 and the distance from the pivot is 1.2 so 400 multiplied by 1.2 that's equal to 480 Newton meter. So this is anti-clockwise and this is clockwise. So when two moments are acting in opposite direction, as we did yesterday, if they are in opposite direction, two moments, what we do, we subtract. So one is 600, another one is 480. So the resultant will be 600 minus 480. 
so what is the result it is 120 newton meter but what about the direction with direction it will rotate the direction of the higher moment because anti clockwise moment is more so direction will be anti clockwise is it clear this question Then the next part, calculate the magnitude and direction of resultant moment exerted by the mechanic, what they mentioned, uh, that we did. Now mechanic B reverses the direction of 400 Newton force. So what mechanic B is now doing, he reverses the direction of the 400 Newton force. So first he was applying a downward force. Now the mechanic B is applying an upward force. So we know mechanic A is causing an anti-clockwise rotation. As the mechanic B changes the direction of its force, so now he will also cause an anti-clockwise moment. So the moment produced by mechanic A, we already calculated that was 500 multiplied by 1.2, that's equal to 600 Newton meter. And mechanic B, the force is 400, distance is 1.2, so that was uh, 480 Newton meter. But now it is anti-clockwise and A is also causing an anti-clockwise. So what is the resultant moment now? If two moments are acting in the same direction, so what we do, we add them. So resultant moment will be 600 plus 480. So that is equals to 1080 Newton meter anti-clockwise. Is it clear this part? As they mentioned that mechanic B now reverses the direction of the force. So as he reverses the direction of the force, the direction of the moment or turning effect will also change and we can work out that both moments are in the same direction so we should add them to get the resultant. But what about the resultant force here? If I say what is the resultant force? What about the resultant force? 500 is downward, 400 is upward. So resultant force will be 500 minus 400, that's equal to 100. And what is the direction? The 100 Newton down. Because in the next part, in part B2, they ask that, Calculate the magnitude of new resultant moment. So what is the new resultant moment? That is 1080 Newton meter. Calculate the magnitude of resultant force now exerted. So 500 downward, 400 upward. So resultant will be 100 Newtons. Is it clear this example? This is a similar question which we discussed yesterday. <clears throat> Another question, figure 2.1 shows a uniform plank. When they say uniform, it means the weight is there at the center. So weight is acting at the center the length of this plank is 2 meter and they already gave you the weight here, weight of the plank is shown 210 Newton. The weight of the plank is 210, the force, exer the force in the rope X is P, so rope X is exerting P and rope Q is exerting a force, uh, rope Y is exerting a force Q. In terms of P, the moment of force about B, when they use the term about, it means what is the point? 
which is a pivot so b is a pivot so where is a pivot in this example because we mention here about b so what we are considering a pivot we consider this point as a pivot so we have to write state in terms of p the moment of force p about b so about b means b is a pivot and what is the moment caused by this force p so moment is a product of force into distance so what is the force here the force is p and what is the distance from the pivot distance between the force and the pivot that's equal to 1.5 so it will be p multiplied by 1.5 is it clear that we have to just write an equation to show a relation between or p and the moment produced by this p the next part calculate the moment of weight about b so how to calculate the moment of weight about b when they say about it means b this point is a pivot so point b is a pivot the force of 210 newton and this is a uniform plank so if it's a uniform plank of total length of 2 meter so if this uniform plank is having a total length of 2 meter so where the weight will act from the center uh, it will act at the center so it will be one meter from both sides so how to calculate a moment of w about b so moment of w about b moment is equals to force into distance so force or weight multiplied by distance so what is the distance between the weight and the pivot that's equal to one and weight we already know that's 210 so this will be 210 multiplied by 1 so moment will be equal to 210 newton meter is it clear the second uh, b1 then the third part we have to calculate the force p how to calculate this force p so we will consider it is balance or equilibrium if b is the pivot which direction this weight will cause a rotation clockwise or anti clockwise the weight w which direction w is causing a rotation or trying to cause a rotation clockwise or anti clockwise so that is anti clockwise which direction this force p is trying to cause a rotation clockwise which direction q will try to cause a rotation q is acting on the pivot directly acting on the pivot will it cause any rotation So it will not cause any rotation because it is acting on the pivot when force is acting on the pivot it does not cause any kind of rotation or turning effect so as we consider it is balance or it is equilibrium so the total clockwise moment is equals to total anti-clockwise moment clockwise moment the force is p multiplied by distance from the pivot because about b so that's 1.5 and anti clockwise moment that is 210 the weight multiplied by distance from the pivot it is 1 meter because it is acting at the center total is 2 
So half will be one. So when we solve 1.5 is multiplied, other side it will divide. So 210 multiplied by one divided by 1.5. So what is the final answer? 210 divided by 1.5. So we'll get this force. which is equals to 140 Newton. When it's a force, it is Newton. Is it clear this part? 140 Newton. Then the last part, We have to calculate force Q. How we can calculate force Q? Look, we already calculated force P. Now force P was 140. As we consider it is in equilibrium, it is balance. 140 Newton is acting up. Force Q is acting up. And weight is 210 acting down. When it is balance, equilibrium, the upward force equal to the downward force. So upward force is 140 plus Q and the downward force is 210. So upward force equal to downward force. We need Q. So Q is equals to 210 minus 140. That is equals to 70 Newton. So basically Q is equals to 70 Newton, which is acting upward so that this beam is in equilibrium. Is it clear this part? Anyone having a doubt? So these type of questions we solve when we consider the object is balanced or object is in equilibrium. Figure 4.2 shows another elephant pushing uh, horizontally against a vehicle with a force of 11 kilo Newton. 11 kilo Newton. Question 4 or question 3, Abdullah? This was question 3. Abdullah Sarfras. Look in question three, in the first part, they're asking figure 2.1 shows a uniform plank, which is having a length of two meter. So if it's a uniform plank, the weight will act at the center, which is one meter from both sides. The weight of the plank is 210 Newton. The rope X exert a force P and the rope Y is exerting a force Q. State in terms of P, the moment of force P about B. So we have to calculate a moment produced by this force P about B. About B means if B is a pivot. So if point B is a pivot, we want the turning effect of this force. So how to calculate a turning effect of the force? Moment, that is force multiplied by perpendicular distance. So what is the force applied here? Abdullah, I want you to use your mic so I can clear each part for you. What is the force we are applying with rope X? Yes, Abdullah. Abdullah Sarfraz. I want you to use your mic. Uh, Sime here in the question they mentioned, it is a uniform plank. So when it is a uniform plank, it means the weight will be there at the center. So if the total length of the plank is two meter, 
so the weight will act at the center which means one meter from both ends yes abdullah sarfraz uh, use your mic yes sir look in this part we have to state in terms of p the moment the turning effect of force p so how to calculate a turning effect the turning effect the moment is the product of force and distance so what is the force we are applying like what do you mean sir the force we are applying for, by rope x they mention here the force in rope x is p so what is the force exerted by rope x that is equals to p multiplied by because we are calculating a moment so moment is force multiplied by distance so force exerted by rope x is p and the distance between the force and the pivot because b is the point of rotation that is 1.5 so it will be p multiplied by 1.5 is it clear abdullah the first part yes sir now about the second part they are asking the moment or turning effect of the weight about b so we want a turning effect of this weight about b so how to calculate a moment moment is force multiplied by distance so force is equals to 210 multiplied by distance uh, so what is the distance here the force is 210 and what about the distance because the weight is acting at the center so weight is having equal distance from the center if, if the total length is 2 meter so half the length will be 1 meter so 1 meter from left and 1 meter from right the weight will act at the center so what is the moment or turning effect of the weight it will be 210 multiplied by 1 so that is equals to 210 newton meter uh, sign sign ahmed i want you to use your mic this was your question by mistake i thought it was abdullah sign yes sir the second part we want to calculate the moment or turning effect of the weight about b when we say about b it means b is a pivot so what is the force here the force is 210 and what about the distance between this force and the pivot because the weight is acting at the center so weight will be at okay sir one meter away so it is 210 multiplied by one so that is 210 newton meter is it clear okay sir yeah then the next part we want to calculate the force p so how to calculate a force p we will assume it is a balance or equilibrium this is a pivot so which direction weight is causing a rotation clockwise or anti-clockwise um clockwise wait wait if you check this direction is it same as the direction in which the hands of a clock rotate or it is opposite opposite sir so it is anti-clockwise and the force p is there which direction this will cause a rotation it will cause a clockwise rotation and what about q because this q is acting on the pivot it is acting on the same point so it will not cause any rotation why because it is acting on the uh, pivot it does not have any perpendicular distance that's why it does not cause any kind of rotation or turning effect and as we assume as we assume it is in equilibrium or it is balance so whenever we assume it is in equilibrium anti clockwise moment is equals to clockwise moment so anti clockwise okay. moment is 210 that's the force multiplied by distance is 1 and clockwise moment is force is p multiplied by distance is 1.5 so 1.5 is multiplied other side it will divide so when you solve this p it will come out 140 newtons is it clear yes sir 
Thank and you. then in the last part, we need Q as well. So because the force P, which is acting upward, it is 140. Force Q, weight is acting downward 210. If it is balance or equilibrium, the upward force must equal to the downward. So 140 Newton, which is up, Q is up and weight 210 is downward. So if it is balanced, the upward force equal to downward force. So 140 Newton plus Q should be equal to 210 or Q is equals to 210 minus 140. That is equals to 70 Newton. So Q should be equal to 70 Newton upward. Is it clear discussion? Yes, sir. So example, another question. Figure 3.2 shows a uniform rod. So if it's a uniform rod, where the weight will act? It's one meter long. So weight will act at the center. This weight will cause any rotation, yes or no? So it will not cause any rotation, why? Because it is acting on the pivot that's why it does not cause any rotation. So the total length is one meter, a force of 12 Newton at a distance of 0 0.3 from support A, a spring, a spring S is there fixed at the lower end and attached to Q. Calculate the force exerted on PQ by the spring. So how much spring is applying a force so basically the clockwise rotation is equals to anti-clockwise. This 12 Newton, it will cause an anti-clockwise rotation. And this spring try to pull it, it will cause a clockwise rotation. And what will be the distance between the pivot and this spring? If the pivot is at the center and the total length is one meter, what will be this distance? That's equal to half meter or 0 0.5. PQ is the, this rod is called a PQ. This is a name, a figure 3. Point, uh, a figure 3.2 shows a uniform rod PQ. This is, this rod is having a name. This rod is called a PQ. So we want to find how much force is exerted by the spring, the force of the spring on the rod. So as we know, if it is a moment turning effect, the clockwise moment is equals to anti-clockwise and we assume it is balance. So 12 multiplied by distance from the pivot that's equal to 0 0.3 and clockwise rotation, the force F is there multiplied by distance from the pivot that's equal to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is multiplied, other side will divide. So 12 into 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5 will get this F. So 12 multiplied by 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5 that's equal to 7.2 Newton. So basically this spring will apply a force of 7.2 Newton downward. Then explain why it is not necessary to know the weight of PQ, PQ, the rod PQ. Why we don't have to find a weight here, like weight can have any number, but why we did we do not bother about it. Maybe the weight will be 2 Newton, 5 Newton, 30 Newton, but we did not consider. Why? Because this weight is acting on the pivot that will not cause any rotation. That's why we don't have to bother about that's a good answer because it is not cause, causing any moment or turning effect. 
so we do not have to consider the weight or we don't have to consider the weight is it clear in the last part yes uh, sign uh, if it was not in equilibrium the result will be different that's why we always consider it is in equilibrium or balance in this question they are saying why it is not necessary to know the weight of pq why we don't have to know the weight of this plank or weight of this rod it can have any number but we do not consider at all so why we do not consider at all because the weight is acting on the pivot so it does not cause any rotation that's why we do not consider the weight of this rod or a beam is it clear the last part uh, abdullah that why we do not consider the weight because the weight was there acting at the center so whenever weight is acting on the pivot we don't bother about the turning effect because it does not cause any rotation or the turning effect so these are some questions related to the moment a moment topic it's you will improve in this topic uh, when you practice the questions different questions different types of question so in the next session uh, we'll do more questions related to this topic any question or a doubt related to the class today So I'll end the session and share this recording with you.